Question number 35. What is the percentage of water of crystallization in CuSO4.5 water? We were given atomic mass of hydrogen to be 1, atomic, atomic mass of oxygen to be 16, atomic mass of sulfur is 32, atomic mass of copper is 64. And then we were given option A to be 35, option C, option A, 35.5, option A, 35%, option B, 36%. Option C, 56%, and option D, 65%. Now, remember, this question is on percentage. And then, if, just imagine it, in the class, you were given 20 questions in chemistry. And then you scored 18 out of 20 questions. And you are asked to calculate the percentage of your score. How do you do it? I guess you know how to do it. You just say 18, which is your score, divided by the total score, which is 20, multiplied by 100. So we are going to be using a similar method to calculate this question. So the question has asked us to calculate percentage by mass of water of crystallization. So the issue now is where do we have water of crystallization? So this is water of crystallization. This five water is water of crystallization. So this five water is the water of crystallization. So we are going to have five water divided by Cu SO4 dot five water multiplied by 100. This is the formula we are going to use, which is similar to the one up here. So we are going to calculate the molar mass of water multiplied by 5, the molar mass of this uh, hydrated salt, and multiply it by 100. So let's do that now. 5 in bracket, atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. 1 multiplied by 2, that is 2, plus atomic mass of oxygen is 16. That should be 18 altogether. Let's put 18 here. The meaning of this 5 is to multiply the total atom, uh, the total. The meaning of this 5 is to multiply the molar mass of water. So molar mass of water is 18 multiplied by 5. Divided by copper is 64 plus sulfur is 32 plus oxygen is 16. And that will be 16 multiplied by 4. Okay. Now that dot, dot 5 also means 5. And what we have here, we just put it down here again. 5, 18. Everything multiplied by 100. So... Let us pick a calculator that will give me 90 divided by, you know, I already know that this one is also 90. 90 plus 4 times 16. 4 times 16. That will give me 64. 4 times 16, 64 plus 32. Then plus another 64. Everything multiplied by 100. So addition of all these masses together will give us 250. Then we multiply it by 100. Once we multiply it by 100, our final answer will be just press your calculator to get the final answer. So let me pick my calculator 36, 36 is 36% 36 is the correct answer for that question number 35. So the correct option is option B, which is 36%. Question number 32. Which of the following pairs of sorts would undergo hydrolysis? If you have been following my page, I have explained salt hydrolysis several times. So you can go to the page to see other videos on salt hydrolysis. Okay, now look at this question. It's talking about pH. You know, we have all the salts are in pH. The meaning is that the two pH must undergo, I mean, each pH must undergo salt hydrolysis. Each pH must undergo salt hydrolysis for you to pick the correct answer. Let's check the first one. Sodium tetrazosophysis and potassium tetrazosophysis. Will this salt undergo hydrolysis? No. The reason is that both of them are salt that is formed from strong alkaline and strong acid. Strong alkaline, strong acid. Salt that are formed from strong acid and then strong alkaline. That salt will not undergo hydrolysis. Or you can say that salt will be neutral to litmus paper. Let's check the second one. This FeCl2, this ion 2 chloride. Ion 2 chloride and then potassium chloride. Ion 2 chloride, will it undergo hydrolysis? Yes. You know why? We have the alkaline there, or the base will be FeO, which is ion 2 oxide, plus then this Cl, the Cl that is there, will, will be for the acid HCl. So FeO is a weak, is a weak base, while uh, HCl is a strong acid. Because of that, this one will undergo hydrolysis. But KCl, KCl will not undergo hydrolysis. Why? Because this salt is formed from a strong alkaline and a strong acid. The strong alkaline KOH, the strong acid ACL. So, which means that this is not correct. This is not correct. This is not also correct because uh, one of the salts will undergo hydrolysis, not the two. Let's check the third one. Aluminium 
chloride and then ammonium chloride. Aluminium chloride is also a weak, a weak base, Al2O3. This is the base and it's a weak base. Then the Cl there, the Cl there is for hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. So this salt we undergo hydrolysis because it is formed from a weak base and a strong acid. This salt we undergo hydrolysis. Let's check the, uh, the second one, which is ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride will also undergo hydrolysis because it's going to form ammonium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, and then ACL. So look at the two as well. This one will also undergo hydrolysis because it is from this salt, ammonium chloride, is formed from a weak, a weak, weak base. It's formed from a weak base. Ammonium chloride is formed from a weak base and the word is strong acid. So in that case, this one will also undergo hydrolysis. Now, let's check the last one. You know, the, the, don't forget about the question that the question is talking about the pH that undergo hydrolysis. So we have actually established that aluminum chloride will undergo hydrolysis. Ammonium chloride will undergo hydrolysis. So this is actually correct, which is option C. Let's check the last one. Aluminum chloride here again. Aluminum chloride here will undergo hydrolysis. But so, sodium chloride will not undergo hydrolysis. Why? Because sodium chloride, this salt, is formed from a strong alkaline and a strong acid. And remember, if a salt is formed from a strong acid and a strong alkali, that salt will not undergo hydrolysis, or better still, that salt will be neutral to litmus paper. It means it will not have any effect on litmus paper. So the correct option here is option C. Number 39. How many gram, not destroyed, how many gram of sodium hydroxide will be needed to produce 100 cm cube of we're given volume, which is 100 cm cube, of zero of a 0 0.2 mole per day cube. And this is also a molar concentration. When you see this kind of question, you can apply to method to solve it. And I'm going to use two methods to arrive at the answer of this question. Because we're given gram, there is a particular formula that link gram and molar material. And that molar says that mass. Mass over molar mass. Mass over molar mass. That's the formula that link mass together. Because the question is how to calculate gram. Gram is the unit for mass. Mass over molar mass is equal to, we can equate it to, there's another formula that links molarity, which is this unit, and volume together. And that formula is a molarity. Molarity multiplied by volume. This volume is a centimeter cube divided by 1,000. If this volume is already a cube, there's no need to divide it by 1,000. So let's make use of this formula to get our answer. Our mass on mode, let's put it x represented, divided by the molar mass. The molar mass we are talking about here is the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. Atomic mass of sodium here is 23, plus atomic mass of oxygen is 1, plus atomic mass, atomic mass of oxygen is 16, sorry, 16, plus atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. That is the molar mass is equal to molarity. The unit of molarity is mole per dm cube, which is the same thing as concentration. So we're given that one to be 0 0.2, multiplied by the volume, which is 100, divided by 1,000. What we want to do next is just to make this x the subject of the problem. x multiplied by 1,000. x multiplied by 1,000, which is equal to 16 plus 23 plus 1 will give us 40. 40 multiplied by 0 0.2 multiplied by 100. You know what to make S the subject of problem. So we cross multiply and we divide both sides. We divide both sides by 1000. Divide both sides by 1000. So this cancels this and then our X is equal to. So we press our calculator what we have. So after pressing our calculator, we arrive at 0 0.8 gram. This is one way of solving it. Another way of solving it, I'm going to show you another method right now. Now we're solving this kind of question is to consider this molarity. This molarity has a formula which is you can use either C or anything. Let's just say CB is equal to gram in 1000 centimeter cube divided by molar mass. And remember, we, we know our, this is our CB, we know it already, which is 0 0.2 is equal to it is this mass that we don't know. X divided by the molar mass of the chemical, the sodium hydroxide, is 40. Now if we cross multiply, this our X is equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by 40. And that will give us, this one will give us 8, and remember this 8 is a gram in 1,000. So we can now determine the mass that will be in 100. And what we do? We just say 8 gram is in 1,000. So how many grams will be in 100? That will be S. 
and if you play this test, it's something that formula, what will you have here? You just have x is equal to cross multiply b, that will be 8, multiplied by 100 divided by 1000. 8 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000. So our x again is still also equal to the same with 8 grams. So the correct answer here is what? This option. Question B. Question number 31. Which of the following solutions contain the least amount in mole of HCl? Option A. Look at this question. If you have to determine the one that has the least amount, it means that you, we need to uh, do a short calculation of each of them. And remember, you have to calculate amount in mole. So if you are calculating amount in mole, there is a formula for it, which is a mole is equal to, because we are given all these things in concentration, mole per dm cube. So that unit of mole per dm cube is a molarity, molarity multiplied by volume in centimeter cube divided by 1000. So we are going to make use of this formula for each of the value. So the first one, we have to calculate for option A. We have to calculate for option A. The molarity of option A is 4 multiplied by the volume, which is 20, uh, 250 divided by 1000. That's for option A. For option B, uh, the, mold, the, molar, um, the molarity is 6, 6.0 multiplied by 125 divided by 1000. Option C, we have 1.5 multiplied by 750 divided by divided by 1000. Then option D, we have option D, we have a 2 multiplied by 500 divided by. So using the formula to calculate this, we have one one mole yes, 0.75 mole here, yeah, 1.131 here, yeah, and then we have one mole. And the question is asking us which one we have the least amount of mole. So the one that is the, the smallest among all these value now is option B, which is 0.75 mole. This is the one that have the least amount of mole, which is option what? Option B. Question number 29. The electronic configuration of neon was wrongly stated as 1S3, 2S2, 2P5. The wrong electronic configuration violates option A, Unzru only. What does Unzru state? It states that in a degenerate orbital, electron occupy singly. Electron occupy a degenerate orbital singly before pairing takes place. So it's talking about a degenerate orbital. And what are degenerate orbital? We have P orbital. We have three suborbital. We have D orbital, which has a five suborbital. We have F orbital, which have how many suborbital? Seven. All these ones are degenerate orbital. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these ones are degenerate orbital. So right now. It doesn't violate, uh, because this is a degenerate orbital. It is until we draw the P orbital before we can know whether it violates it. So since we are not drawing this, this option A is not correct. Option B, about principle only. What does about principle state? It says that electron enter into the orbital in order of increasing energy level. And that is why we have one S before two S. So this is an increasing order of their energy level. So it doesn't violate this uh, principle too. About principle, it doesn't violate it. Poly exclusion principle. What does poly exclusion principle state? It states that an orbital can only accommodate maximum of two electrons, one in off spin and the second one in down spin. So this is an orbital, and the orbital can accommodate maximum of two electrons. So one in the upper spin, the second in the lower spin, like this. So in this case, S orbital only has one orbital, and it can accommodate only maximum of two electrons. S orbital can only accommodate maximum of two electrons. So in this case now, S cannot have cannot occupy three electrons because X orbital only have one orbital. It's not a degenerate orbital. So because of that, this uh, electronic configuration violates Pauli exclusion principle only. And that the correct option there is option C. If you look at option D, both have our principle and own rule. It doesn't violate our principle because this is the correct order of writing this electronic configuration. One S will come before two S because one S has a lower energy level when you compare it to two S. Do you get it now? So it doesn't violate uh, Avogadro principle. The only principle that is being violated in this electronic configuration is Pauli exclusion principle. And why? An orbital can only accommodate maximum of two electrons. Then S orbital only have one orbital. It's not a degenerate orbital. So there is no way S orbital can accommodate three electrons. And that is why the correct option is the correct option here is option C.